Hello there. We are going to discuss about division of risks in buying projects and how the assigning of roles uh, is taking place in uh, the procurement of projects and then uh, about some strategic issues. We are referring to the concept also to the concept of project strategy here uh, but I think that uh, towards the end of this presentation when you are uh, listening to my talk uh, uh, it gets clarified uh, where the actual strategic issues in uh, organizing for projects are in terms of uh, uh, di dividing or sharing risks between the parties and assigning roles and, and, and doing this kind of a buying uh, thing. Okay, um, I start uh, with an example of uh, Heathrow Terminal 5 project. And this is from uh, my colleague Tim Brady's presentation and there are some references about uh, uh, their uh, articles uh, about Heathrow Terminal 5. And uh, the message here is uh, that uh, in the left, uh, the typical approach of traditional contracting uh, includes that the client dumps the risk to the contractor. The price is decided in advance and there are penalties if uh, the contractor cannot uh, uh, meet uh, the preset uh, criteria or constraints or delivering in time or do, uh, delivering according to the specifications and so on. In Heathrow Terminal 5, this is the right side of, of, of the picture, uh, uh, the client is more or less partnering with the contractors and even calls them partners. Uh, and the client has accepted to bear all the risk. The client sees that uh, uh, the risk, in any case, it comes to a uh, client's disadvantage. So it's maybe better even during the project to accept that uh, we are taking care of uh, uh, the risk and uh, pay all the costs that it costs. And in this way, to integrate pe better the contractors or partners to uh, do the work for the benefit of the client. So, the contract form here is uh, uh, cost plus, that is uh, cost uh, uh, reimbursement type of a contract. And uh, the idea is to have a kind of a success-driven arrangement where the partner wants to do uh, things that are better for uh, the client even during the project. And also an important aspect is here that uh, the client also keeps the flexibility of doing changes during the project because the client pays all it costs so the client and the par uh, partner can uh, together uh, make better designs and change uh, the direction during the project for better value. By the way, in Heathrow Terminal 5, the client was BAA, which is British Airport Authority, just to mention about uh, who is now the buyer in Heathrow Terminal 5. Okay. Um, this picture um, wants to communicate to you that uh, there are many different futures. This is a kind of a decision tree illustration where there are decision nodes and event nodes. And uh, there are probabilities attached to which uh, branch you take in the decision tree. Uh, and uh, there are different possible futures where we can end up to. And this picture illustrates uh, 
the idea of uh, making plans B, uh, making fallback back plans, having flexibility, allowing innovation during the project and not freezing the designs too early and keeping alternatives routes open. And then the main question is that are your collaborators, that is contractors or partners, are they willing to do innovations for you? And how you buy, what kind of a contract you are uh, making with them, that applies uh, uh, to that. So if you want to have them to innovate for you, if they, you want to, that they give the best for you, maybe some unique solutions that have ne never been done before and design those with you. So then please think about what kind of a contract you are going to make with them. Um, in low complexity projects, uh, there are mostly risks that can be shared with uh, contractors. But then when we move to high complexity projects, there are risks that uh, definitely the owner, the buyer, doesn't necessarily want to share with uh, the contractor. This is also uh, in commercial sense understandable because if you really put such risks uh, to contractors that they cannot carry, so uh, they will price the contract maybe too high and uh, everybody loses, you pay too much, uh, they suffer from carrying risks that they cannot manage in an appropriate manner and so on. So it's better that the client, the owner, uh, carries uh, those kinds of risks that don't belong to the contractor's scope of capability, let's say it in these words. Well, this picture uh, from Morris and Hoke, classic book on uh, the anatomy of major projects, also uh, illustrates uh, this uh, issue. So there is a continuum of contracts from cost reimbursable or cost plus type of contract to lump sum. So uh, uh, there is contractors incentive in the lower uh, horizontal axis. Then there is owner's risks on uh, the higher horizontal ax axis. Then uh, to the left there is owner's flexibility. That definitely it might be that in some kind of a project the owners want to keep the flexibility and change the project on the run. And then uh, uh, to the um, right there is uh, contractors risk and if we for example look the lump sum contract that is fixed price contract uh, uh, down to the right then the contractors incentive might be the maximum because they really can earn they uh, uh, bid for high price and they uh, earn the profit that they have planned and probably they understand the scope, it is agreed at a very detailed level. And uh, the contractor's risk also is uh, at maximum there. The owner's risk is minimum, but then the owner's flexibility also is uh, to the minimum. They have engaged into the contractor and into certain solution, which is in detail specified, so there is no flexibility for the owner. Whereas in the cost reimbursable contract uh, left up, uh, the owner's flexibility is maximum, contractor's risk is minimum because the owner pays all the cost that uh, the project incurs. And uh, owner's risk, of course, is maximum, owner carries also all the risk and contract contractor's incentive. We can say that it is minimum, but it also depends how the contract is form formed. For example, there can be additional bonuses or something like that for uh, contractors' good performance. But if you go to cost uh, reimbursable contract, so uh, one 
important thing to understand is that this requires a lot of control and management from the owner's organization. So you cannot just uh, leave the contractor to do collaboration with you without following all the time how the contractor is doing it, how it performs and so on. And for these kinds of bonuses, for example, it's important that you somehow measure contractor's performance even though you pay uh, all uh, the costs that uh, the project incurs. But still, uh, in a, from additional performance, you might want to give bonuses for the contractor and that also makes uh, the contractor's incentive much higher. Okay, in Turner and Sinister, uh, uh, there is a picture about what kind of a business culture uh, is good uh, compared to business challenge. The business challenge might be simple or complex. And then the business culture uh, would be uh, kind of a transaction based and uh, traditional or then based on trust and mutual respect and uh, uh, high collaboration with the contractor. So if we have a simple business challenge uh, and transaction based uh, and traditional business culture, then we normally go to conventional lump sum contracting or defining the project in detail before it starts. When we have trust and mutual respect in place, we can have relational contracts more loosely described scopes and uh, based still on uh, uh, um, clear targets and uh, uh, understanding about where the focus is and both parties understand that. When we have a complex business challenge, then this transaction based and traditional contracting doesn't apply necessarily. So it's described here as a get out area. You wouldn't like to go into that. But if you have really a complex business channels, then uh, alliances based on trust and mutual respect are the right kind of a uh, aspect in your business culture. Goal alignment, early involvement, focusing on effectiveness and the end result of uh, the actual project. In Turner and Simister uh, article, there is also another picture which uh, describes selection of contract types. So please look in the article about that and what the article discusses about that. I think that it is rather important. I explained that in my own way uh, by using the previous slide. Then um, still to understand what do you want to contract when you are buying uh, a project. I have taken this picture from Müller and Törönen's article about the supplier's capability base. In the left uh, we are focusing on efficient delivery of products and services and uh, the capability of the uh, supplier is to produce and deliver. But then in the middle uh, there might be that the supplier can deliver you incremental innovation and even rather new solutions and then uh, the supplier has innovation capability. So definitely you should select a supplier that has that those kinds of capabilities if you want a supplier to come along and deliver you something which is new. And uh, to the right uh, even we can talk about radical innovations. So the supplier can uh, deliver radical innovations to the buyer, to the customer. So uh, if you want to have that so maybe you should then have a kind of a uh, trustful and uh, relationship based uh, business culture and, and, and really help the supplier uh, and uh, design the supplier's incentives in the way that it helps 
to uh, make those radicals, radical innovations for you. Well, um, now if we look some very basic def definitions, uh, so strategy, what is that? It's the means and methods uh, or, or a high delivery plan to achieve goals. And project strategy, as we define it in Arto and uh, others article in 2008, the project strategy is a direction in a project that contributes to the success of the project in its environment. And this is rather high level definition. So for example, this doesn't take any stance on where the direction comes, whether the direction comes from a plan or whether it is kind of a shared uh, understanding and perspective among people and, uh, and, and so on. And uh, to conclude this uh, presentation, I uh, want to say that we have been talking about risk strategy to get an understanding what kind of uh, risks we want to kind of uh, catch or hunt in our uh, risk management. And when Jouni Honkala was providing his uh, video presentation about project implementation methods, so he more or less was referring to a kind of an implementation strategy or so, even though he wouldn't probably have used that uh, word, but to designing how this project is implemented, how it is in implemented uh, in general. And uh, this theme of this video lecture about division of risks and assigning roles is very much in the strategic core of organizing and managing projects. That is my argument. So I wanted to connect this, these my previous messages to uh, the idea, idea of strategy and project strategy. So thank you very much. It was nice to talk with you. Hopefully this is useful and let's continue discussions in the class. Thanks. Bye.